Good morning, sixth grade. Uh, today we're going to start chapter four, lesson one. Um, so we'll talk about the Sumerians. Lesson one, the Sumerians. It matters because the Sumerians made important advances in areas such as farming and writing that laid the foundation for future civilizations. The first civilizations in Mesopotamia. Guiding question. Why did people settle in Mesopotamia? Civilizations first developed about 3000 BC in the river valleys of Mesopotamia, Egypt, India, and China. Throughout history, the need to have water for drinking and growing crops influenced where people settled. Although there were differences among the early civilizations, they were alike in many ways. As these early civilizations developed, people formed social classes. The social class people belonged to partly depended on their occupations. They did specialized types of work. Using improved technology, they made more and better goods. They set up governments to pass laws, defend their land, and carry out large building projects. The people of these civilizations also developed systems of values and beliefs that gave meaning to their lives. The Two Rivers Mesopotamia, the earliest known civilization, developed in what is now southern Iraq. Mesopotamia means the land between the rivers in Greek. The civilization began on the plain between the Tigris and the Euphrates rivers. These rivers are nearly parallel to each other and flow more than 1,000 miles, 1,600 kilometers. They run southeast from the mountains of southeastern Asia to the Persian Gulf. Mesopotamia itself was located in the eastern part of the larger Fertile Crescent. This curving strip of good farmland extends from the Mediterranean Sea to the Persian Gulf. The Fertile Crescent includes parts of the modern countries of Turkey, Syria, Iraq, Lebanon, Israel, and Jordan. Early Valley Dwellers For thousands of years, clues to Mesopotamia's history lay buried among its ruins and piles of rubble. In the 1800s, archaeologists began to dig up many buildings and artifacts. These finds revealed much about early Mesopotamia. Historians believe that people first settled Mesopotamia about 7000 BC. The first settlers were hunters and herders. By about 4000 BC, some of these groups had moved to the plain of the Tigris-Euphrates Valley. They built farming villages along the two rivers. Taming the Rivers Early Mesopotamian farmers used water from the Tigris and Euphrates rivers to water their fields. However, the farmers could not always rely on the rivers for their needs. Little or no rain fell in the summer. As a result, the rivers were often low. The farmers did not have enough water to plant crops in the fall. During the spring harvest, rains and melting snow from the northern mountains caused rivers to overflow their banks. This flooded the plains. Sometimes unexpected and violent floods swept away crops, homes, and livestock. Yet farmers in Mesopotamia knew that the floods were also helpful. Flooded rivers were filled with silt, or small particles of soil. When the floods ended, silt was left on the banks and plains. The silt proved to be a very good soil for farming. Over time, people in Mesopotamia learned to build dams to control the seasonal floods. They dug canals that let water flow from a water source to their fields. This method of watering crops is called irrigation. Irrigation let these early farmers grow surpluses, or extra amounts, of food. Farmers stored the surpluses for later use. When food was plentiful, not all people needed to farm. Some became artisans or skilled workers. They specialized in weaving cloth and making pottery, tools, and weapons. As artisans made more goods, people's lives changed. People began to live together in places that favored trade. Small farming villages grew into cities. By 3000 BC, several cities developed in Sumer, a region in southern Mesopotamia. Progress check. Explaining. How did floods sometimes help farmers? All right, so let's go ahead and take a quick look at this ancient irrigation. Um... So this is an image of the area around the Tigris and Euphrates rivers. And this 
area is known as the Fertile Crescent. The earth in this region is very dry. Civilizations developed here because the two great rivers provided the natural resources needed to sustain life. Over time, people in the Fertile Crescent learned how to harness the power of rivers. This photo shows part of the ancient city of Rumkel and the Frit River in present-day Turkey. Farmers in ancient Mesopotamia dug irrigation channels to move water from rivers to their crops. They did this to extend the reach of the rivers. This way, places further inland could benefit from the water. Here you can see how the water changes the otherwise dry land into green fields where crops can be grown. So here's the ditches they would dig and then it would let the water flow through these canals. An irrigation system makes it possible to grow crops. These crops will help sustain life in an otherwise dry region. And here is a picture of a modern irrigation system that sprays water over a large area. This would be what they use for modern day irrigation. Sumer's Civilization. Guiding question. What was life like in Sumer? Sumer's people were known as Sumerians. They built the first cities in Southwest Asia, including Ur, Uruk, and Uradu. These cities became centers of civilization that controlled the lower part of the Tigris and Euphrates valleys. City-states arise. Sumer's cities were surrounded by mudflats and patches of scorching desert. The harsh landscape made it hard to travel by land and communicate with other groups. This meant that each city was largely cut off from its neighbors. As a result, Sumerian cities became independent. The people of each city raised their own crops and made their own goods. As the cities grew, they gained political and economic control over the lands around them. By doing this, they formed city-states. Each city-state had its own government and was not part of any larger governing state. The population of the city-states ranged from about 5,000 to 20,000 people. Historians think that each Sumerian city-state was protected by a large city wall. Ruins and artifacts have been found by archaeologists that support this theory. Because stone and wood were in short supply, the Sumerians used mud from the rivers as their main building material. They mixed mud with crushed reeds, formed bricks, and left them in the sun to dry. The gates of the wall stayed open during the day, but were closed at night for protection. The ruler's palace, a large temple, and other public buildings were located in the center of the city. Often, these city-states went to war with one another over resources and political borders. Sometimes they fought to win glory or to gain more territory. During times of peace, city-states traded with each other. They also agreed to help each other by forming alliances to protect their common interests. Gods, Priests, and Kings The Sumerian people worshipped many gods, a type of belief known as polytheism. These multiple gods played different roles in Sumerian life. The Sumerians thought that some gods had power over parts of nature, such as the rain or the wind. They also believed that some gods guided the things that people did, such as plowing or brick making. They honored whatever god would help their activity. Although Sumerians honored all the gods, each city-state claimed one as its own. To honor its god, a city-state often included a large temple called a ziggurat. The word ziggurat means to rise high in the ancient Akkadian language. The very top of the ziggurat was a holy place. It was the god's home, and only special priests were allowed to go there. In the early days, priests of the ziggurat ruled the city-states. Groups of important men helped them govern. Later, Sumerian city-states became monarchies. Sumerian kings claimed they received their power to rule from the city's god. The first kings were most likely war heroes. Over time, their rule became hereditary. This meant that after a king died, his son took over. In most cases, the wives of kings did not have political power. However, some controlled their own lands. So in the picture here, you can see an example of a ziggurat, ziggurat um, which was built to be visible throughout the city-state. The walls of the ziggurat enclosed the royal warehouses 
and the city's treasury. Um, and so you can see that in that picture there. Social groups. People in Sumer were organized into social classes. Generally, people remained in the social class into which they were born. Kings, priests, warriors, and government officials belonged to the upper class. The middle class consisted of merchants, farmers, fishers, and artisans. The middle class was Sumer's largest social group. Enslaved people made up Sumer's lowest class. Most of these people have been captured in war. Also, criminals and people who could not pay their debts often were enslaved. Enslaved men and women worked for the upper class. Women and men had different roles in Sumerian society. The basic unit of society was the family. Men were the head of the home. Boys went to school and were trained for a specific job. Sumerian women ran the home, taught their daughters to do the same, and cared for the children. Women had a few civil rights. Some owned businesses. Sumerian law required parents to care for their children. The law also required adult children to care for their parents if their parents needed help. Farmers and Traders If you lived in Sumer, you were most likely a farmer. Each farmer had a plot of land located in the area around a city-state. Dams and waterways ran through this farmland. Wheat, barley, and dates were the major crops. Farmers also raised sheep, goats, and pigs. Trade was another key part of Sumer's economy. The Sumerians did not have some of the goods that they needed. For example, even though many Sumerians were skilled metal workers, they had to trade with other peoples to obtain most of their metals. Trade routes linked Sumer to places as far away as India and Egypt. Sumerian merchants went to other lands. They traded wheat, barley, and tools for timber, minerals, and metals. The minerals and metals were then used to make jewelry or tools. For jewelry making, Sumerians valued a red stone called carnelian from India's Indus Valley. They also searched for a blue stone known as lapis lazuli from what is now Afghanistan. Traders returned with iron and silver from present-day Turkey. Sumerian Contributions Guiding Question what ideas and inventions did Sumerians pass on to other civilizations? The Sumerians created the first civilization that had a great influence on history. Later civilizations copied and improved many of the ideas and inventions that began in Sumer. As a result, Mesopotamia has been called the cradle of civilization. It was the beginning of organized human society. Writing of all the contributions made by Sumerians to the world, writing is perhaps the most important. The writing system they developed was the earliest known system in the world. Writing was a way for Sumerians to keep records of their lives and their history. Writing was also a way to share information. They could pass on their ideas to later generations. Sumerians created a way of writing called cuneiform. The cuneiform writing system was made up of about 1,200 different characters. Characters represented such things as names, physical objects, and numbers. Cuneiform was written by cutting wedge-shaped marks into damp clay with a sharp reed. The name cuneiform comes from a Latin word meaning wedge. Sumerians wrote on clay because they did not have paper. Archaeologists have found cuneiform tablets that have provided important information about Mesopotamian history. Only a few people, mostly boys from wealthy families, learned how to read and write cuneiform. After years of training, some students became scribes, or official record keepers. Scribes wrote documents that recorded much of the everyday life in Mesopotamia, including court records, marriage contracts, business dealings, and important events. Some scribes were judges and government officials. Sumerians told stories orally for centuries. After developing writing, they were able to record these stories. Their tales praised the gods and warriors for doing great deeds. The world's oldest known story is from Sumer, written more than 4,000 years ago, and still studied today. This story is called the Epic of Gilgamesh. An epic is a long poem that tells the story of a hero. 
All right, you can see some examples here of um, the cuneiform, which is Sumerian writing etched on stone um, that has been found by archaeologists. So there's an example there for you. Technology and mathematics. The people of Mesopotamia also made many useful inventions. For example, the Sumerians were the first people to use the wheel. The earliest wheels were solid wood circles made from carved boards that were clamped together. A Sumerian illustration from about 3500 BC shows a wheeled vehicle. They built the first carts, which were pulled by donkeys. They also introduced vehicles into military use with the development of the chariot. For river travel, Sumerians developed the sailboat. They invented a wooden plow to help them in the fields. Artisans made the potter's wheel, which helped to shape clay into bowls and jars. Sumerians were also the first to make bronze out of copper and tin. They used bronze to craft stronger tools, weapons, and jewelry. The Sumerians also studied mathematics and astronomy. They used geometry to measure the size of fields and to plan buildings. They created a place value system of numbers based on 60. They also devised tables for calculating division and multiplication. The 60 minute hour, 60 second minute, and 360 degree circle we use today are ideas that came from the Sumerians. Sumerians watched the positions of the stars. It showed them the best times to plant crops and to hold religious ceremonies. They also made a 12 month calendar based on the cycles of the moon. Progress check. Explaining. Why did the Sumerians invent a writing system? Thinking a historian.